Hello, hello, everyone. Hello. While everyone is joining us today, let's kick off with the icebreaker. Uh, I think that our chat is activated. Vlad, can you check it out? Second, yep. Okay, here we go. Cool. So, hello, everyone. Uh, let's kick off with the icebreaker. What was your favorite Olympic moment this year? You can share it in the chat. We just activated the chat. And I think that's uh, kind of very Australian <laughs> breakdancer. Cool, cool. And did you uh, did you watch the whole uh, Olympic Games like from the start till the end? Oh, wow. Great. Uh, my favorite moment uh, was actually like, I, I don't know, I probably uh, person, uh, like visual person. Uh, the opening ceremony was very impressive. I like those um, rings of Olympic Games uh, shining in Paris. And basically the closing ceremony was Tom Cruise flying from the roof. It was sort of an uh, unexpected one. Hello, hello. Um, what about you, Vlad? Uh, personally, yeah, I, I just remembered. I also, I also loved the, the performer, Tom Cruise performance. Like a really cool segue for, 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 for the next uh, Olympic Games. Yeah, basically. And, and basically for his next movie. I'm I'm looking forward to it. So, uh, everyone, we are talking about what was the most favorite uh, moments during the Olympic Games. Put it in the chats if you had one, or basically let us know do you watch the games or not. Okay. Um, let's uh, let's see. And basically, let's kick off. Uh, if you um, add your thoughts on Olympics in the chat, we'll get back to it. So just okay. So we have one answer. Let's uh, the guy mm. shooting without equipment. Yes, the guy from Turkey, right? It was it was so cool. He was he was so um, you know not nervous at all. So his confidence was amazing, really like that so much yeah yeah and you know and uh actually they used a lot uh they used this like um like a uh, like a photo with this uh, person from turkey for for memes like uh and especially for cold outreach when on one hand you have like tons of tools tons of things and the other hand you have just this turkish uh guy and and just something like just do your cold outreach just send emails just 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 do cold calling <laughs> so basically what you really need just basic stuff but don't over complicate uh, and just follow the, the flow basically yeah high uh, level flow right okay so let's uh, get to the multi-channel sequences and cold outreach right today we're going to talk about 10 proven multi-channel sequences to book more meetings and let's proceed my name is Olivia Milton, I'm CMO at Reply, and together with me uh, today, Vlad Alexienko, growth leader at Reply with SDR background. Vlad? Yeah, it's always super happy to share best practices, everything I know about cold outreach and special multi-channel cold outreach. Um, so yeah, super happy to share everything we, we know in these 50 slides. Amazing, okay. Very important thing to mention, this year we are celebrating 10 years in the Cold Outreach game. And this journey wouldn't have been possible without you guys. So basically we got together nine amazing partners and 10 sweet deals from uh, SenseSpark, HighPrice, MailReef, Belkins and other, other amazing companies. Check it out. It's reply.io slash 10 years celebration and check it out the deals. Uh, basically, in 2014, in August, the first line of codes of reply was written. And we hope that you will um, enjoy the celebration as well. 
because giving back feels much better than receiving. Thank you again for uh, being with us. Well, some of you uh, were with us uh, through the whole this journey. Some of you joined us recently, but that's an amazing, uh, amazing date for a tech company. And to highlight key things here about Reply, we are giving 10% uh, off monthly subscription on email volume and multi-channel plans and 40% off annual subscription. These coupons are in front of you. You will get the slides. And so we encourage you to check it out and start using Reply with discounts, just benefits uh, from the celebration as well. What are we going to cover today? We're going to talk about 10 multi-channel sequences and best practices for these sequences. Insanely useful bonus content, and we will answer all your questions, like as much as, as many questions as we can. And of course, there will be recording and we'll share the recording, the templates and resources, links and slides with you after the event. So why multi-channel outreach matters? As you can see on this flywheel, we are in the middle, like in the middle, there is a B2B sales process that consists of so many stages from lead generation to discovery, qualification, pitch, objection, handling, closing, pull-up, checking in. And every stage of the process, there is a drop-off. Certainly, when we talk about multi-channel outreach and basically cold outreach, most of us think about lead generation only. However, cold outreach should be applied on every stage of B2B sales process in order to maximize your conversion and eliminate drop-off. However, even more important thing to consider is uh, that it's not only about B2B process and B2B sales process. It also refers to marketing and PR. And I'll give you an example. In marketing, we use multi-channel sequences to reach out to our marketing partners for link building, for negotiation on marketing campaigns together. We reach out to media for uh, public relations purposes. Multi-channel outreach also heavily refers to business development and partnerships, and we'll talk a lot about that today. Staffing and recruiting, investor relations, this list can be proceeded more and more. The question to you guys, what are you using sequences for? Well, just give us your answers in the chat. It's inbound, outbound, partnerships, venture, uh, venture capital, um, fundraising, etc. So let us know um, what sequences are you using. Okay, let's see. Oh, fundraising, outbound, partnerships, outbound, outbound. Interesting. Great. Great. Partnerships. We, we hope that today we will give you uh, more examples. And after the, after the event, you'll have templates for other um, business uh, sectors, I can say. So like for different go-to-market activities, um, partnerships and stuff like that. Yeah, amazing. Marketing efforts. I, I really enjoy when um, you comment guys about marketing and when I uh, hear from the market that outreach is used in marketing, since uh, the applications of cold outreach and marketing also like significant. Um, and it's just about like inviting to the events, inviting speakers to the events, building partnerships, link building. It's just, it takes time and it needs the right tools. Okay. So we cannot talk about multi-channel without knowing the channel benchmarks. We put together the main channels and I can say supportive channels in this table. The main channels are marked with the uh, blue stars. And these are the channels that are used, uh, well, in general, these are uh, something that you will think uh, in the first hand to add to your multi-channel sequence. But what you need to think about is that um, there are channels that can be scaled and automated. There are channels 
that on the contrary cannot be scaled, but they provide great open and reply rates, like for instance, LinkedIn email. Well, it can be hardly scaled with, um, due to the restrictions of LinkedIn. Or for instance, cold calling, a great channel that is highly applicable in some industries and niches. However, uh, it highly depends on people doing, this, uh, doing cold calling. What do you need to consider? If you are doing a heavy outreach, when you need to reach out to thousands of people, you need a channel that can be scaled. And of course, you probably think about cold email. And then you need, you know, the benchmarks, the average open rate, average reply rate, and you can do your math. You can calculate actually the output from a specific channel. You can improve the output by adding additional channels, but you need to think about the limitations. And that's a very, very important factor. So among scalable channels, one can mention, so basically that's uh, called email, mainly called email and video also can be scaled even with personalization. And according to reply data, um, called email with video included provide two, from two to three X higher reply rate. Um, Vlad, do you want to add something here? No, I think uh, we can move on. I think, yeah. Uh, awesome. so, some channels, again, uh, think about how you're gonna, if you can automate them or you can uh, still leverage them manually. For instance, the case can be when you reach out to very um, niche audience with high checks. So you can definitely think about adding some additional channels to um, like even manual channels, but to improve the overall output of the sequence. And let's kick off with our 10 multi-channel sequences. Vlad, Mike, back to you. Sure. All right. So um, yeah, so today we will be sharing these 10 multi-channel sequences. Um, most of them we, we tried here at Reply ourselves. We we so basically we are sharing just just templates, best practices we tried ourselves and we believe we see like really good results for us here. So just want to share them. Okay, let's move on. Um Let's see this next slide. So uh, actually, I I won't be focused on sharing templates like uh, examples of those emails, LinkedIn touches, phone calls, and so on. Uh, we will share these with you as a link. We will share all sequences in one link with all templates with everything. So I don't want to spend time on just like content of those sequences here. But um, yeah, we will share the templates with you. Then you will have a list of steps, delays. Uh, templates so you can just modify and adjust them for your own needs. So, so today we will want to focus on best practices, some some cool tips and tricks to to like make them better. So let's start with inbound leads. First of all, uh, why inbound leads? Because we tried multi-channel sequences. We, we tried it like, I guess, five or six years ago uh, for our inbound leads. And then we noticed it works. And then we decided to scale across other channels. In terms of inbound leads, I mean things like product sign up, you sign ups, users, freemium users, your product qualified leads or product qualified uh, accounts and so on. So for, for us, uh, for, for, for apply, it's just when, when you create a trial account, we actually score every like uh, prospect uh, who creates an account with us. Then we can decide whether we want to push the specific prospect into a multi-channel sequence or like um, a more generic one. But when it comes to like core, uh, to the most important ones uh, and like top level prospects and accounts, we want to push them to multi-channel sequences. Why? Because they, because we want to maximize our reply rates and meetings uh, in this segment. So we just implemented this multi-channel strategy across 20 channels. Then we noticed cool results. We were able to, to get more meetings. So then we say, okay, let's try multi-channel for other use cases. And yeah, let's proceed. Uh, and then, oh yeah, so we decided to implement it for 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 our trial sign up uh, 
and users. And then we, I've noticed that more and more companies started implementing this strategy. For example, I noticed this post from Tyler Deng. He's a founder of Beehive. It's a, another SaaS company. What he does, he actually sent connection request messages and like uh like LinkedIn messages to, to, to again to trial users of his product. And then he shares his uh just useful piece of content with the use his prospects. For example, he's saying something, hey, thanks for, for, for sign up, signing up to Beehive. I'm just trying to connect with as many users as I can. Uh, so I'm sharing my newsletter here. And it makes like these this uh cool um like feeling when a founder reach reaches out to to you personally not just via automated email or i don't know marketing automation tool like i don't know hubspot and or active campaign but through linkedin and it's awesome so we actually trying to do the same here at reply for example i'm trying to connect with some users and saying something like hey first name excited to connect with reply user on linkedin so uh, then we can just have, proceed having conversation with them through social selling, so they they can uh, they can like learn about reply even more. Uh, so in this case, for inbound leads, you can rely on like LinkedIn, uh, emails, phone numbers, SMS, WhatsApp. So you you can be creative here, and then like uh, so inbound can be like a playground for you, like a sandbox for you, because you can play around with different, uh, different, different channels with different sequences, templates, uh, like, and, you know, so build this ends. And then you can just grab some cool ideas to your outbound sequences, for example. Uh, for outbound sales, uh, it's getting harder. Why? Because we should understand that some of uh, channels aren't that scalable anymore, specifically LinkedIn, for example. Some channels, as Olivia mentioned, require lots of, I would say, human power. For example, cold calling, you, you can't scale like cold calling without increasing your headcount, right? Uh, so yeah, you should be more strategic here when it comes to outbound sales. So that's one. Mm, and what we mean here, so so, we have all those channels. We know their the pros, cons, and their scalability, right? So, and when it comes to LinkedIn, uh, we can just set, we can just view 50 profiles per day. We can send up to 15, maybe 20 connections per day, connection requests per day, and we can send approximately 20 LinkedIn messages per day. So it means if you have one LinkedIn account as a founder, for example, or as an SDR, uh, so you are limited, right? You can just probably reach out to, to, to 20 contacts per day um, maximum. So meaning like 400, 500 per month, right? Uh, so, so scalability is super important in outbound. So let's, and then explain why in the next slide. So when it comes to scalability, you should decide how to, how to like, build multi-channel sequences for your for your outbound sales process for example we can decide based a deal size for example for small deals um i would suggest to focus on email heavy sequences when it comes to mid-market sales again uh with reply email heavy and light liquidin touches works perfect because reply is basically in this middle uh, segment um, mid-market size segment um, uh, industry, right? And when it comes to huge deals, for sure, you can definitely rely on outbound. Why? Because you will definitely have SDRs, you will have, they will have territories, they will have a limited number of accounts per month and so on. So they have to maximize their reply rates per account and per prospect. So multi-channel sequences like email, LinkedIn, plus phone call. Uh, for even bigger deals, you will probably need something like personalized videos uh, as well. And by your ICP, for example, if you have 1,000 leads per month, you know that these are the most important ones for you. For example, 200 leads are super important ones for you. Then you can 
you can bucket your prospects and say, okay, these ones I will push to multi-channel sequences and these ones to high volume email only sequences, for example. So yeah, so that's how we decide how to build our actual outbound engine based on channels. Um, also, um, when it comes to LinkedIn, it's super important to maximize your acceptance rate, uh, like connection request acceptance rate. Why? Because when it comes to outbound sales, if you want to send your um, your pitch via message, you have to connect with this prospect, right? Because you can't send emails, sorry, messages without being connected to this prospect. So I'm gathering together all this interesting connection requests they sent to me. So maybe they will help you with your outbound process as well. Uh, we will share this as a link. All right. And when it comes to outbound and multi-channel sequences, here are my best practices. Uh, maybe you haven't heard them before. Some of them, for example, leave me plus in the chat if you learn one or two tips, uh, new tips when it comes to multi-channel outbound sequences. Here are some things. For example, uh, start with the most scalable channels first. Meaning, for example, if you have 500 contacts in your sequence, start your sequence with cold email always. Why? Because in any case, you you will you will start like your first steps will always generate a majority of like those positive responses. So you don't want to spend LinkedIn connection requests and messages or phone call like cold calling time for prospect who will reply via email like otherwise. So there is no need to spend your time here. So always start with email, maybe one, two, three email follow-ups uh, when it comes to actually outbound. So then you, you generate majority of positive replies via email, and then you can use cold calling and LinkedIn touches for less engaged prospects. And when you use those different channels, you can always, you can create bridges between channels. Um, can you please click on the first uh, image? So when I, I mean bridges, here's how we do this. For example, hi, first name, Vlad from Reply.io here. I reached out recently via email regarding our plan to release a set of sales automation API specifically for CRMs. Uh, happy to share our vision with you and hear what you think. So actually we, we start with cold outreach sequence with via email. We get our first positive responses via email and then we just start using LinkedIn touches, for example, including uh, like connection requests and messages. Then again, I mentioned already three to five emails is in sequence is a perfect choice uh, for you. Then you can add LinkedIn Connect, LinkedIn Message, and maybe one more LinkedIn Message follow up. So that way you have eight steps and maybe two more, let's say, call calls uh, if needed. So totally 10 steps. I think it's a perfect mid market or SMB sequence for when you have highly scalable and uh, like huge target audience, for example, maybe tens of thousands of potential prospects in your pipeline. Again, with enterprise, it's a completely different story. Then you can focus on less aggressive cold outreach sequences, meaning longer delays between steps, because typically on LinkedIn, they are sharing their 30 step sequences across 30 days. And I like, oh my God, it must be so, so rude, uh, so rough, but I understand why they have to do this because of limited, for example, target audience and so on. But in my opinion, uh, less aggressive sequences are better nowadays because it's super easy to mark you as a spam on email, on LinkedIn. Actually, you can report, they can report uh, your message as a spam on LinkedIn as well. So if you get a bunch of those, LinkedIn will start uh, chasing you actually, uh, then you can always repurpose highly valuable content assets across channels. For example, reuse your personalized videos for email, LinkedIn, maybe SMS if it's inbound lead. And again, 
uh, use LinkedIn steps for leads who are active on this platform. How you can do this in Sales Navigator, there is a filter called posted on LinkedIn, meaning they are active on this platform, right? So that way you can maximize your connection request acceptance rate. Why? Because they are active on this platform. When you like add inactive prospect to your sequences, probably you will have to wait weeks, if not months, when they accept your uh, your uh, connection request. And actually, I forgot to add it. Number seven is have like relatively long delays between your LinkedIn connection request and your LinkedIn message step. Maybe seven days because it takes time on average. Uh, to, to to notice your connection request, accept it, and so yeah. And reason why because you can send message if they they do not they, if they uh, hadn't accepted your connection request. Awesome. So how many pluses we got here? Okay, one plus. Oh wow, I thought gonna be more. Okay, no problem. Um, then. Let's proceed with trigger based outbound. It's similar to like number two option, but for this case, we can use triggers for for our reason for outreach that can be used across different channels like email, LinkedIn connection request, and phone call actually if needed. So for example, saying something, like, hey, reason for my connection request is because, because I noticed you like this post because you're hiring new salespeople and so on. So there are a bunch of different triggers and then you can use those triggers again as a reason for outreach, as a reason for your message, as a reason for your call. Uh, yeah, let's proceed with the next slide and then for example, here's how it works and on our end, trigger-based outreach, for example, hey, uh, reason for my email, because I noticed that you're hiring 10 SDRs. You're changing your, for example, CRM or tech stack or your customer success tool or you're raising money, congrats. Then, and then again, you can repurpose this hook across other channels as well, uh, and then I will show you in the on the next slide. Uh, yeah, so here are some examples of trigger based um, connection requests. They send to me, for example, hey, I recently reached out to you because I saw your Zapier integration. Hey, I noticed that you guys at Reply use amplitude for user tracking, or saw your post about tracking important things in your life. Uh, would love to get your thoughts on this idea. So uh, you see, rather than sending generic uh, connection requests or emails, you can focus on trigger-based uh, emails and LinkedIn touches as well. And I guess I haven't done it yet, to be honest, but I guess you can implement this for cold calling as well. Uh, okay, and back to you, Olivia. Thank you, Vlad. Um, yep, yep, let's proceed with the fourth idea for a multi-channel outreach. And this time uh, it's about marketing qualified leads, MQLs. So basically every company has its own um, description of marketing qualified lead and sales qualified lead. In majority of cases, uh, these refer to those contacts that downloaded your content, attended a webinar, a masterclass, um, attended your online course, your virtual conference, and so on. Of course, like not all these people, but those people who, um, who are um, matching your ideal customer profile. So what we're gonna do with those marketing qualified leads? Of course, the Critical part of the process here is lead qualification. So it basically refers to any uh, lead that you are receiving. When we have a qualified lead, again, we have a framework. Every company should have a framework like BANS or any other that uh, it, the factors that are important for qualification, like the industry, the company size, the roles, and so on and so forth. And once we have the qualified leads, we can push them to a sales process. 
because disqualified leads can be pushed to marketing automations and nurturing until they are probably uh, ready to talk to sales. Um, for our example, this is how it works at Reply. We have, we're hosting a batch of online events during the year. And like in this example, this is a sales development excellence in 2023. By the way, a little spoiler, this year in October, we'll be also hosting sales development excellence. So uh, let's uh, keep in touch. We'll keep you updated once the registration is open. But for those people that register uh, at our events and webinars, uh, so you see at the right side of uh, the screen oh, right here, um, we are using HubSpot and we have those leads aggregated in HubSpot. So basically we track those form submissions and registrations. And then for those leads who we think that for those who match our ideal customer profile and those who we want to push the sales team. We actually do this and uh, push them to a sequence, um, sales sequence for uh, starting the sales conversation. The fifth, uh, the fifth multi-channel uh, sequence idea is about re-engaging your CRM. Well, why is this important? Uh, if actually, there, there is a great meme about that, that everyone wants to work with the new leads, but no one wants to talk with those leads that are already in your system. And that's, uh, well, that's not fair, right? Because when we have uh, leads that uh, probably well at, at the moment that wasn't the right time for that uh, for them to talk with you about your product or uh well they were not ready for some reason there should be the right time for them right so we need to re-engage them and another important thing to consider is the uh, scoring system the scoring system can be very different from company to company. And sometimes a scoring system can be can based on the number of actions that a uh, contact is doing with uh, all your marketing activities, uh, how they open your emails, how they um, engage with the content and stuff like that. So think about who you can re-engage from your CRM. And this is an example. Um, Vlad has mentioned that email, uh, called email like, as a first step, is a very important, um, probably the best option to start your sequence. This is why in uh, some of our examples, we're showing the first step, which is a cold email, like in this example. So uh, again, uh, I do believe that this template will be included in um, the template library that Vlad will be sharing after the events. But you can see the results, the output from the sequence, those uh, reply rates and interested. So actually 27 people interested in learning more are our new opportunities, like re-engaged leads from CRM. And we have another poll, like actually the first poll for today. Um, how many touch points do you typically use in your multi-channel sequences? Vlad, can you please activate yeah, the poll? Give me a second and I will launch it. Boom. Let's cool. see. What about us at reply? Uh, it depends. Uh, on average, I guess it's five to seven. Uh, maybe maybe ten. Oh. I, I think uh, for the um, tier one leads, I do believe there was 20, right? 11 plus. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, for majority, for majority, like, uh, actually, it's kind of outbound, I think so. Well, meaning when you re-engage all leads in your CRM, when you re-engage closed closed opportunities, when you re-engage uh, demo requests, or when you re-engage all trial setups, for me, it's all outbound as well, because you have to, to do this job, right? It's outbound. So in those cases, we also use 10 plus steps. Agree, agree. Right, because uh, we have more because because for inbound leads it's easier because we have their consent. For example, we have their phone number, or so we can reach out via let's say phone number or SMS or maybe WhatsApp if needed. So yeah. 
more channels actually in this case. Okay, so we have 42 people responded. Let me add All them. right. Okay. Go in, yeah, share the results. results. Interesting. Five to seven. Uh, cool. Yeah, that's. Uh, that's I sort guess. of sweet spot, right? Mm, yeah, uh, for outbound, I guess, because majority of us use it for outbound sales process, I guess, three emails plus two LinkedIn touches, three plus one or two phone calls, call calls, it's uh, a sweet spot for SMB mid-market uh, use case, I think so. Mm. Okay, okay, let's uh, cool. let's proceed then. And yeah, the six, six idea for a multi-channel sequence. I think I will have to interrupt you. We have sure. to speed it a little bit up because we still okay. have just 20 minutes. Okay, uh, sure, sure. Yeah, I'll be, uh, I'll be quick. So the website visitors to multi-channel sequence. It's like your connection between inbound and outbound. With this example, um, at Reply, for those of you guys who um, are familiar with Reply platform, we have AI chats. And for those basically who are not familiar, let me just explain here a little bit. AI chats, that's a sales train chatbot with video avatars. Well, you can use video avatars, you can use just its text version, but the point is it's AI native and it um, works with you on a goal level. So actually you can uh, root, uh, like, uh, uh, tell your AI chat to do uh, and push the conversation to a specific goal, like getting contact information or uh, suggesting a prospect to start a trial or book a demo. Like in uh, this example on the right side of the screen, our um, AI chat is uh, talking with a website visitor and uh, suggesting to book a demo. And then a really a magic starts. So let's say we can um, convert a visitor right in the chat, but also can there can be a situation when we uh, got the contact information and there was uh, no further steps taken. So what we can do, we can push those uh, contacts to reply sequence. Since the AI chat is uh, one of our replies products, they are integrated with sequences and you can push those website visitors into a sequence in reply and close the loop uh, of inbound and outbound uh, channels. Reply.io slash AI chatbots, that's a link to the landing page, check it out. I highly recommend uh, trying the AI native uh, chatbot. Vlad, Mike, back to you. Awesome, yeah, thanks. Uh, another way how you can rely on multi-channel sequences is your demo no-shows. Uh, demo no-shows, I guess it's a typical issue of tech, uh, B2B space industry. So you, your marketing team start generating meetings and for some reason, part of your prospects will never jump on a call. Uh, for us at Reply, uh, on average, between on the next slide, you can see for us, we lose uh approximately 50 to 100 uh, demos per month it's demo no shows typically it, it varies between let's say 10 to 20 sometimes 25 percent based on like like season time zones maybe some i don't know some some holidays uh but yeah that's an issue so on average it's gonna be like maybe 15 percent or something like that so we're losing lots of them. So how we can, what we can do here, we can create a separate sequence for your, let's say you can create a separate sequence for your SDR or for your account executives and automate this process. So here's how it works for us. So for example, when um, there is a demo no show, uh, an account executive or an SDR creates a note in HubSpot, just a note saying no show, then our Zappy integrations grab this node and we know that this prospect uh, haven't joined a meeting. And then we just pull data from our CRM and push it to um, a ease dedicated sequence, multi-channel sequence saying, hey, noticed you haven't show up on a meeting. So we have this sequence uh, in, in the list of templates 
we will share everything with you. But that way we can, uh, I forgot to mention probably, but that way we can return back, I guess, 30, 20 to 30% each month. So uh, actually we can get back 15 meetings, sometimes even 30 meetings per month, which is an um, awesome result. Mm. The same with ghosting opportunities, as mentioned before. Uh, well, uh, you have when you push prospects down the road, some of them may drop off, some of them may may new priorities now, they, or maybe they're uh, like researching competitors in the meantime. So ghosting opportunity sequence again gonna be a great uh, a great a great like opportunity to win your to win some customers back potential opportunities back for for us here's the process here at reply every two six to two three four months maybe sometimes six months we check we grab all our uh, like opportunities who stuck in uh our deal stage called i don't know uh let's give because it's example in i guess discovery held we just download this list from our HubSpot and push them to a specific sequencing. Hey, we had a conversation with you a month ago or two months ago. Are you still evaluating um, the solution? And I guess we will have results for this sequence here. So yeah, so bunch of different use cases when it comes to MQLs and re-engaging leads in your CRM. So when it comes to uh, ghosting opportunities, it's number three. As you can see here, apply rate is almost 30%. So, so yeah. Uh, uh, so you can check those. Majority of the sequences are multi-channel sequences. Because why? Because we have we already have their LinkedIn and their phone number in most cases because of their signature or form or whatever. Um, see so yeah, if you need like a demos boost so you can just just segment your crm your pipeline your deals and grab additional meetings like instantly and i guess reply could help you with that optimize the whole process uh okay i guess we have a question just let me see there is no show status in reply might be a good idea for future uh yeah yeah i think yeah that's gonna work for mid-market I, I think uh, we sh yeah. we can put it uh, put it down to the backlog. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Thank you so much for sharing. And we proceed with the nine idea for a, a business development. In this example, so basically, give me a second. I'll just provide additional context. Um, business development is kind of broad topic for every company, and it can be. Uh, it refers to a lot of things like from finding new partners to go into, let's say, other markets or other um, like even different business segments. In this example, we were uh, validating the market to sell replies API. Replies API, which is uh, well a, a great uh, basis to um, build system on top of this API. Like you use it as an engine and um, to automate um, cold outreach. And this is the case. Again, um, multi-channel sequence, uh, two channels, but that that that's it. Um, we start with email. I do think I have, yeah, the first email is here. So uh, the, the sequence, uh, it was, I think it was just five steps uh, in the sequence uh, during 20 days. And these are the results. Um, we have even statistics uh, here included for email and LinkedIn, and it all works together. Um, we start with email explaining uh, the purpose, explaining the case, and other steps support this message. Again, we can test them. Um, use uh, in, the, in this case a uh, connect request uh, mail connect request was used uh, to uh, reach out to the audience and these are the results uh, knowing that the average uh, average check for a selling an API contract it's kind of a, an enterprise deal getting 41 
uh, interested responses, it feels like uh, really a good output of the settings. And partnerships, Vlad, my back to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so and probably the last way how you can get more meetings if need, if you like, uh, if you have to grow your organization or business relying on other channels rather than outbound, meaning outbound sales, you still can rely on outbound. And that's what I noticed like a few months here at Reply. So any actually activity, I would say go to market activity or new marketing campaign, it's still about outbound, meaning we have to reach out to influencers, we have to reach out to creators, we have to reach out to partners, we have to reach out to, uh, I don't know, uh, affiliate partners and so on. It's still about like outbound cold outreach. So that's why I'm, that's why if you want to like uh, try other channels, meaning, I don't know, affiliate marketing or uh, integration or partnership, um, like lead growth and so on. So it's still about the partnerships and that an outbound and multi-channel outbound actually will be the best option here. Why? Because we've noticed that if it's not about outbound sales, like meaning you are not selling something directly, but you have to, for example, build a relationship with, with a company who have a similar audience, for example, another B2B sales tool, or uh, you want to have a, like to invite someone on podcast or invite someone on um joining your webinar, for example, it's all about partnerships. And what we've noticed that LinkedIn plus email works like a perfect combo here. Uh, so yeah, we have also, I guess we shared one sequence for this, uh, for this use case. Oh, and you have another one. Oh, yeah, yeah that, that's an example of um, marketing partnerships. Um, so we reached out to invite speakers to our sales development excellence conference and uh we also used email and linkedin here and yeah for this example i think you were talking about this one right oh yeah i think yeah yeah mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so awesome i think yeah it's uh so these are the actual partners uh mm -hmm. lead generation agencies and this is a great example of um, the sequence when we have manual emails, automatic e emails, and LinkedIn mm -hmm. included uh, together. Again, uh, with the stats for, for each channel. Okay. I think the next slide. Okay, so, so the right, and we put together some best practices when it comes to multi-channel sequences again. Uh, you can bucket, you can prioritize your accounts and leads based on tiers, like tier one, tier two, tier three. For me at Reply, it's almost semi-automated process, meaning uh, you can build like really, really simple lead scoring system based on just fields like industry, country, uh, I don't know, vertical uh, and size, for example. And then you can bucket your prospect accounts into those three segments and prioritize sequences, whether it's going to be a multi-channel or email only sequence based on those scores. So uh, we will suggest to use multi-channel sequences for, for sorry, using multi-channel sequences for inbound leads, like always, because when you maximize response rate on your website, meaning you have a demo request form or you have a trial signup form. So when you reach out to them like super fast within five minutes, it's a, there is a huge chance you will get a response like instantly. Um, so you prioritize speed and multi-channel sequences for inbound leads. Three to five emails in a sequence one. Step one, three will generate the majority of replies. So that's why I will definitely recommend to start with three emails and then like move on to other channels. Use additional variables like industry, title, location. Use pin text to boost your deliverability in terms of emails. Uh, create content on LinkedIn to boost your LinkedIn presence from time to time. Why? Because that's how you can increase your social selling index and increase your LinkedIn um, limits in terms of connection requests and messages. 
Um, add LinkedIn touches, connect, message, and email if you use Sales Navigator. Try other LinkedIn touches like like, follow up, comment for highly important prospects, for example. WhatsApp might be a great channel in some countries and some industries. For example, you will be amazed that lots of com countries, like fully like companies in some countries, like fully rely on WhatsApp. Uh, as main channel for their business. It's their CRM, communication channel, support channel, sales channel, and so on. Um, try SMS for inbound leads, for example, demos, no-shows, trial signups, and so on. Use personalized guilders, repurpose them across channels if there is no original response. Why? Because you spend at least one, three minutes per video. So you have to to repurpose this asset. Uh, avoid aggressive sequences for outbound leads. Um, and my choice is 10 to 15 touches within 30, 45 days. I know lots of SDRs and salespeople can compress them to 15, 20 days, but uh, I think um, it's a, a more human way uh, to have less touches within longer time frame. In terms of outbound leads, with inbound leads, it's a completely different story. You have to uh, to adjust the strategy for uh, for uh, types of leads as well, of B2B sales as well. So yes, those are some of my best practices I try to follow. Sometimes it's hard to follow all of them, but it's my cheat sheet and cheat list for uh, for my own outreach. We have one question uh, from Yuri. Uh, would it be possible to have access to the webinar after? I'm sorry. Yes, of course. We will. Uh, we will uh, share the link to this webinar. And so, like, no worries. Uh, there is there is a recording, and we will share the link. So you are all safe. Um, and basically, we will share all the links to the templates and the sequences. Okay, and and uh, and uh, yeah, a question. Another question. I have noticed in sequence there is an option for LinkedIn connection. If no reply and not connected, how we can add that option while sending LinkedIn connections? Mm -hmm. That's in Q and A. You can check it out. Yeah, I see. A uh, second. Uh, I have noticed in sequence there is an option. Mm, sorry, could you please rephrase it because I didn't get the question. Unfortunately, would love to help, but uh, didn't get the point actually. Uh, sorry. Um, yeah. Can you share any roadmap development for apply this year? Absolutely, absolutely. I guess it's gonna be AI SDR, AI SDR, multi-channel sequences. So we are working on. Um, I don't know if I can say it, but we are working on uh, ranching sequences uh, for more diverse and more uh, like for more um, sophisticated more sophisticated call cold outreach, for example, if there is no email, if there is no LinkedIn URL, if there is open and so on. So conditional sequences, AI, SDR, and uh, I think we should have some kind of secret or something <laughs> for for, uh, for for our marketing campaigns. But yeah, lots of things there. Lots of things agree and live data. Basically, there'll be significant improvements. Uh, there is a significant improvement improvements in AI SDR. Um, for those of you guys who know what is that, that's a AI agent that automates the whole. A sales development process from prospecting and finding contacts to, uh, of a sequence to creating a sequence and to responding on prospect emails on your behalf. Uh, so that uh, there should be also significant improvements in that functionality as well. Vlad, we have a few more questions in Q and A se mm -hmm. section. Can mm -hmm. you take a look? Okay, so yeah, I see that some people are leaving us. So let let me let me share the link for you before you jump off. Uh, so 
I share in this presentation slide. So you will have access to all links, to all useful content. So spend a few days gathering everything together. So I hope you will enjoy it. So let's back to the Q&A. Um, based on your experience, what is the limit on the number of emails that you can send per mailbox per day? Probably it was mentioned. Okay, I see. Uh, thanks for the question. Uh, per day, per inbox. Well, it also depends on your use case. If it's inbound, you shouldn't be afraid. You can send like like 100, 200 emails per inbox and everything's gonna be fine, like for sure, we, because we can see this with our own inbound sequences. When it comes to outbound nowadays, it also depends if you're super pro, if you are targeting, your, you're building targeted lists, if you know everything about cold outreach, I would say 70 to 100, maybe 120 emails is like still okay. But if you are like, I would say an average user, you don't have time to dig into details in terms of deliverability, best practices. I think, I think 40 to 60, maybe 70 emails per day per mailbox is a sweet spot for you. So that way we introduce unlimited mailboxes plans so you can connect more mailboxes and scale your cold outreach like lowering uh, volumes per inbox per day. So, okay. And I mean, okay, so I guess, it's, uh, unfortunately we don't have this logic yet when meaning um, if no reply and if not connection request. So you're, you're actually asking about branched sequences. So we will have this, so. Uh, about, uh, yeah, keep in touch and update on these uh, major mm -hmm. products, new things that are about to happen this year. Um, okay. Let's then... uh, let's proceed with the slides, right? Mm -hmm. And then we will answer our, all questions. Sure. Yeah. So, yeah. so we have a, uh, another poll. Um, what's your most successful outreach sequence result? Vlad, can you launch the poll? Uh, give me a second. Let's see. Uh, just a second. I uh, lost access to polls, I guess. Oh, no. Up here. The second. Launch. Boom. So, uh, what's your most successful outreach sequence results? Let's see. Vlad, do you want to share what we have as reply? Uh, in terms of outbound, uh, it's uh, 10, 15, I think. In terms of multi-channel, pure outbound, they ha have never heard about us before. So they knew it's mid-market. It's 10 to 15 is the most successful one. Okay. Let's wait a bit more. My The most successful sequence, um, let me uh, think. I think it was... Um, 33 uh, percent of reply rate and that was a sequence inviting uh, to the conference inviting speakers to the conference um, you can be surprised uh, guys how people want to gain this media presence and join the online events so if you are thinking about hosting your webinars and conferences with partners uh, it won't it shouldn't be an issue um, since people want to get online. Just think about it and I just encourage you to try it out. So let's see, I'm stopping the poll and sharing the results. Let's see, so the majority... Mm, one to five, I guess. One, one to four, one to five percent. Okay, well, that's definitely, a, there is definitely room for improvement here. So we hope that those things that we are suggesting during this webinar and basically the previous webinar, when we were talking about the um, multi-channel uh, sequences and basically the channels of the multi-channel sequences uh, will help and you to improve I guess, Yeah, and I guess the next slide will help yeah. uh, with Let's this a little bit, yeah. Oh no, not this one. <laughs> so yeah, actually I've already shared everything uh, of my um, link to this presentation in the chat. So feel free to open the last slide and I put together all materials in one link so you can you can get back to it when you want. Great. Uh, Q&A. 
Okay, so a few more questions. Uh, yeah. Is it advisable to use company domain for outbound sales? We have issue with email deliverability and reply and response. Okay, so in this case, for sure, you should use uh, like new domains for outbound if you have those uh, issues. How to fix it? Quick fix here. Just buy a new domain, wait a month, then buy a few inboxes, wait two weeks, then warm up your inbox a little bit, meaning send emails to your friends, colleagues, maybe some partners from other companies, uh, ask them to reply back. You will get maybe 40, 50% reply rate. And then in a few days, start using it for cold outreach, send maybe 30, 50 email, emails per day, and you should have like really, really good results. That's step number one then you can dive deeper into deliverability topic i guess mm. any plans to revamp meetings booked and calendar uh I actually i don't know maybe so unfortunately I'm not a product manager but um i haven't heard about this yet uh, anyway, we will keep you guys um, in the loop in terms of everything that will happen with the product this year. So, I mean, um, not sure about that, but let's mm -hmm. let's keep in touch. And yeah, it, and and there is another question: Can you suggest the best multi-channel campaigns options for IT staff augmentation? Sort of hard question. Uh, I guess. I guess we'll already discuss those best practices. So start with emails, then add LinkedIn. Hmm, can you suggest the best multi-channel campaigns options uh, for for IT staff augmentation? Unfortunately, I have no experience in this uh, industry at all, unfortunately. But uh, I think from what I have seen, uh, email plus LinkedIn will work. Uh, in this industry, in this space, you will have to be creative, basically. That's my, like, suggestion number one, meaning you have to be, have something unique and you should, you should, like, um, I would say, uh, have intent-based list building process, meaning you have to be laser focused on accounts that need your services right now. Maybe they're uh, decreasing their headcount size or maybe in, otherwise they are increasing their headcount and so on. And then you need to be like, use cold outreach where you use some numbers. For example, okay, I noticed X, we help with, uh, with, this, with this and this. When, you, when, when the other companies like yours onboard us, they can get this and this. Here's how what you what you say and uh, this approach should, should work. But again, a super tough industry uh, for the cold outreach. I think. Agree. Um, I think we have a few more questions in the chat. Not sure. Luck can mm -hmm. take a look. Okay. I think we talk about some already. Uh, we are getting more than Coronic asks. We are getting more than. 20% open rates for our cold emails automated by spam check tools. Uh, then if you if you feel that you have those spam checks, it's true. You should focus on, nowadays you should focus on reply rates only, basically. If you get, when in terms of emails, if you get something between one, maybe to 3% reply rate per email, uh, in your sequence, uh, meaning you on track and you shouldn't worry about opens at all, basically. If your reply rate is super low and you have high open rates, definitely it's about maybe your value proposition lists or again, yeah, so spam uh, checkers. Reply rate is zero. Uh, wow, uh, Simon, uh, feel free to... to to, to email me via reply, we have let reply.io uh, share your story, maybe your sequences, your templates, your your leads. I will try like maybe share my suggestions here. Great. Okay. And another 
thing that we want to encourage you to check is our multi-channel cold outreach course. So basically during the two webinars, this one and the previous, we were talking a lot about multi-channel and like, I, I would say that we are um, evangelists of multi-channel, right? At reply, so like we are pushing this topic because it really works. And with our examples, uh, we wanted to show you how to actually combine those channels and how to make it work for you. Check out the course, reply.io slash multi-channel outreach course. We got six experts from six companies that contributed to this course that's completely free of charge online and you can use your speed to uh, go through the models. Seven models we covered um, the main channels. Uh, the additional channels are model coming uh, next week. Yeah. So please yeah. check, check it out. And finally, let's stay in touch. Connect with Vlad, connect with me and check out the course. And that's it for today. Thank you so much. All right. Take care and see you soon on the next webinar. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Bye.